We've got a few games to get caught up on today, and then we've got a double header coming your way. The first game is going to be against Havant and Waterlooville in the FA Trophy third round. And, well, the second game depends on how we're doing the first one, really. We're going to be either doing the next round of the FA Trophy or a league game. So we'll just have to see. Let's just get into it. So we're starting this episode off with a match, actually. We've got the Haven't and Waterloo match in the FA Trophy third round coming up today. Haven't and Waterlooville are obviously in the Vanarama National League South and are second. So they're absolutely flying this season. What's their form looking like? Yeah, they've won seven on the bounce. I think they might be uh, in a good position with us. The only drew against Dartford, though, and we absolutely dominated Dartford last season. So I'm going to take that tiny victory and <laughs> that's based my entire overconfidence around it. But anyway, let's get caught up on the games that have happened since last time you were here after that 3-3 draw with Hitchin Town. Uh, an awful first half, followed by a pretty dominant second half, meant we managed to sneak a point back from that. And we carried that momentum through to the Tamworth game. Beat them 2-1, which after losing to them 2-1 in the opening game of the season, this was a very nice turnaround. It was not a comfortable game by any means. And it wasn't until the 68th minute that we managed to find the breakthrough. Morehouse finds Burke on the line. He gets it past the defender and manages to get it into Yeboa to comfortably finish into the bottom corner. Then around 10 minutes later, they manage to get an, get an equaliser. Opaturi with a nice ball over. Dawes gets it to Kyle Hoodley and up front, who's really making me regret not signing him. But then in the 92nd minute, when all hope was lost and I thought we were only getting a point from the game, Lidl ran down the wing, gets the ball to Gaksha at the back post and it was a lovely header to beat the keeper on the near side. So a very good three points for us there. Tamworth are doing very well in the league this season. I think they were third or fourth at the time of this game. So I'm very happy with that victory. And the next game also finished 2-1. We played Felix though. This one had a very similar issue in the fact that we scored and they scored almost straight away afterwards. But in the 14th minute, long ball over from Paradise. The keeper comes out and makes an absolute mess of it and Yeboah just slots it into the open net. But then four minutes later, a long ball over is not dealt with brilliantly. They managed to find Neil, who comfortably beats Tommy Jackson in net. Before, in the 73rd minute, Yeboah starts off a move. Liddell to Heliwell, who managed to find Yeboah back in the middle and slots it past the keeper without issue. A fantastic three points there. It was a very even game, and I think we just basically edged it at the end, but I am absolutely delighted with the outcome. And the 2-1 score lines continued in the next match. Although we were on the wrong side of this one, Kettering Town, who are, according to the season preview, the best team in the league and have been on incredible form. I think they started the season pretty badly and have just been unbeaten ever since. They've been absolutely dominating everyone and we were one of those people, apparently. This did start off with one of the best goals we're going to see all season. Morehouse gets fouled, but Advantage gets played. Gofford plays it through to Yeboah, who just from 30 yards pings it into the top corner. He was absolutely loving it, but then the good time didn't last for long, and a ball to the back post, Benson manages to beat Jackson, putting it in the top corner, before in the 59th minute, a chipped ball over to Fleming, he just has no problem at all beating Tommy Jackson, but after that, that did sort of kill the game off, neither, re neither team really did anything after that point, but yeah, you can see from the XG, we had 0.6 to their 1.86 they they definitely deserve the victory in that game. The only other bit of potentially important news we've had, Jack Morehouse approached me to let me know he's considering exploring the options available to him at the end of his contract. We had a chat and somehow I managed to talk him down and he has at least agreed in principle a new contract. Uh, we have offered him, he says he wants 240 to 300. I think we got him down to 200, it might be 210. But if he does accept it, it will make him the highest paid player in the squad. But quite frankly, he's our best player. And if I can hold on to him for another season or two, I think it's for two more seasons, the contract. In fact, I can actually check, can I? Yeah, £220 a week, actually. But a two-year contract. Much higher bonuses across the board. I did have to up them a little bit just to get him to accept it. But I am very happy that he's at least agreed in principle. As soon as these news items started coming in, Torquay United did make an offer for him. Only £350. I'm not accepting that. Torquay are only in the Vanarama National League, which, you know, only. I mean, it's two leagues above us. But he has also got interest from... Oh, it's disappeared now. He had interest from Sutton United, who, if I go... Sutton United are struggling, but they are in League One. So I think I feel like if they came in with an offer, it would be very hard for me to keep him at the club. But the fact that they're interested in him makes me feel very good about the team in general. 
And just before we get into the match, I might as well show the league table. I've been as we've caught up in all the matches. We've still got a 10 point lead at the top, but Kettering have got a game in hand on us. So let's say that's a seven point lead. We're still relatively comfortable, and it seems like we can beat pretty much any team other than Kettering pretty comfortably. But anyway, let's get on with our FA Trophy match. And I think this is how we're going to be lining up today. We've got Jackson in goal, Bates, Paradise, Mitchell and Tanadra along the back, Gofford in defensive midfield, Ratchford and Morehouse in centre mid, Gaksha out on the left, Lidl on the right and Yeboa up front. It's a very standard lineup for us. Sometimes we've got Piggott instead of Tanadra or Maguire instead of Bates, but generally speaking, this is our first 11. So yeah, this looks pretty good and I think we're just going to get into the match. We'll go into the dressing room. Uh, we've got nothing to lose. Let's show how good we are. Oh, see, he's gone from nervous to inspired. Absolutely love that. Uh, we'll make sure our defence and midfield are happy and pretty much everyone apart from Gaksha is loving it. He And he's looking composed, so that's not a bad thing. We are in our standard 4-3-3, whereas both Havens and Waterlooville are also in a 4-3-3, actually. So we've got... Th We've got three teams in this match. Doesn't quite seem fair, but hopefully we can overcome them. Ratchford instantly gets tackled from behind. Is that just going to be a straight red? It is as well. That's absolutely incredible. That's like 50 seconds into the match. They go down to 10 men. And they've had to completely change their formation. They're now in like a 4-1-2-1-1 four, four, diamond. This is exactly what we needed to make this a bit more comfortable. Although we're now half an hour into the match and there's been absolutely nothing... Let's get some encouraging words on the go. Everyone's buzzing. It's the 40th minute now. Is that really going to be the only highlight in the first half? Oh my God. They have a man sent off and we can't even create a chance. Look at that XG. I mean, we've had two, we've had two shots on target each apparently, but they can't have been good ones because we didn't get to bloody see them. Pump fist. Keep going. They're a man down. You boy, you're not supposed to be looking complacent. You should be much happier. Oh, you can still improve. I sort of go with that all the time. It's like, yeah, you're a bit shit, but I've, you know, I've got faith you can do better. But anyway, let's get into this second half. They're messing with their formation quite a lot. Come on, we need to demand some more here. Something needs to happen. We're in the 60th minute and we literally haven't had a highlight yet. Right, Yeboa is down on a red rating. Yeboa was actually kicking off a few games ago that he wasn't playing enough after he came back from his injury. And he's played in almost every game. And I think he started in pretty much almost every game, apart from occasion. I think we had to put Gaksha in there for a game or two. But that might have been during the injury, so I don't I don't really know what he's annoyed about. So we're going to bring Lusaquano in for him. Do we want to do anything else? Our midfielders have been relatively okay. I mean, Gofford is under 7.2, so I definitely wouldn't change him. I might bring Morehouse as a Mazala on attack just to try and get a few more people forward. But I'm going to, I'm going to switch Ratchford to a deep line playmaker just, you know, to try and counter that. But that gives us an extra man committed to going forward. And we've instantly got our highlight. This is the first actual highlight of the game. The long ball comes in. No one's going to be able to deal with it, but it's going to fall to Tanadra. Is he going to smash it? No, he's not. Keeper punches it for no reason. Gaksha, Bates. Feels like we've got a chance brewing here. Ratchford chips the ball in, but doesn't find a Sequino. Bates manages to stop him, stop them from clearing it. Gets a clearance in. Liddell at the back, and it goes slow. That hit both the side and top of net. That was so close to going in. But now we've got another highlight almost straight after. Jackson with a long ball out to Bates. Absolutely miles of space on that far flank. And he finds Morehouse in the middle. He's going to always find Liddell. This could be a very good chance. He's going to take a shot. And he, Liddell is so bad at shooting. He's <laughs> just... What? I need to look this up. What is Lidl's finishing stat? Only six. That makes sense. He's only got six and his guard. He's got nine composure, which isn't terrible. But I feel like he should definitely be doing a lot more than he is. But the fact that he's out in as a winger on attack, which is cross often, cross from the byline, run wide with the ball, stay wider, and he's constantly running inside and just spannering chances over the stadium is not ideal. <laughs> Come on. Okay, we've got another highlight. I was getting I'm getting really annoyed that we're not creating more here. I'm, go, I'm actually going to go positive. Got a notification it won't disappear. That's annoying. But Gaksha's got the ball on the wing. Ratchford manages to find Bates. Gets it to Lucy Quayner. And it's 1-0. There we go. That's what we needed. All right, assistant. Shut up in the bottom corner. Uh, Gaksha with a beautiful ball there. Well, Ratchford with a beautiful ball there. Through to... Bates, finds this quite in the middle, and Mr. Reliable, he hasn't played as much this season as he did last season, but you can always rely on him to show up and get the goal. He's come up clutch for us again, and now they've got a goal kick. 
Paragos gets it to Gaksha. Morehouse. Long ball over to Bates. Good control. Gets it up to Ratchford. That Lusacrana, you are six miles offside there. Yeah, that's... He was almost standing behind the goalkeeper when he took the shot. That was a little ridiculous. We're going to make a sub or two. Who have we got who's not been brilliant? Uh, Liddell hasn't been fantastic. Uh, Gaksha hasn't been fantastic either, so we're going to take him off for Burke. I think these two need to swap wings, yes. Uh, Liddell, you should still be... You can be an inverted winger. Burke, you should still be an attacking winger. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, and what else have I been... Neither of them have been fantastic. I'm also going to take off Morehouse just to give him a rest and bring Heliwell in. Probably move that to a form of a supporting Mazala again. Just to try and kill out the last few minutes of this game. Now, there is one more highlight. This better go our way. Zach Mitchell. Standing over the ball. He's just, he's just killing time. If we can stand in front of the three minutes and you just take a book in, I am more than happy with that. No, okay. <laughs> Gets the ball. Oh, somehow falls to the Sequeno. Who slots it home again? There we go. Oh, who's Lidl's just fallen over on the far side, completely unaffected by the game. And he's gone down like someone shot him. I mean, I've, I've just subbed my winger on. You can't do anything. He, he was just walking. Yeah, he just pulled a hamstring, it looks like. Either way, a brilliant finish from Luis I don't want to take away from that by focusing on something off the ball. Uh, a tight offside. Uh, no, this defender, Pasley here, is definitely keeping him on. Yeah, Liddell is going to have to come off. Hmm, we don't really have an option. Oh, uh, oh, we don't have any subs left, do we? We can't. No, I didn't think we did. I always assume we've only got three, but we're gonna, just going to take him off. Bring Bert back a bit, just to maybe try and cover. I'm going to swap these two over. I've done this before, just so that Mazala, because the Mazala covers the wing a little bit more. We'll bring support there. We'll bring Bates back on support. Just try and see out the last three minutes of this game. We have got another highlight, though. But gets the ball over. Oh, no, it's falling to them. Patterson looks to start a counter-attack. We need someone to make a challenge here. And Ratchford does, but not good enough. Coker, as soon as it gets to 10 men against 10 men, they've got an attack for the first time in the game. But it looks like we're dealing with it. Tanadra and Burke working to get the ball out of our half. Is Burke just going to keep going? No one's closing him down. And Paul, St. Paul puts it over. Jesus, this, this, we had no highlights for 60 minutes. Now, Tanaja is on the wing. He looks to put in a cross. He gets tackled. I'm not comfortable with how this is going. I'm just going to move this back to balance. I'm a bit nervous. Ratchford with a little cheeky back heeled pass there. That was brilliant. Uh, Zach Mitchell with a long ball over. Lusa Crane is getting an end of it. Is he going to secure this? No, he's not. I'm getting nervous like it's 1 0. We're 2 0 up. Why am I stressing? You can have a goal, quite frankly. It's about to be full time anyway. I, I don't mean that. Please stop. Um, Bates. Another ball up from Paradise. We're just hoofing the ball long and it seems to be working. Lusaquino is through again. That was an, a very odd effort. I like the um, ingenuity of it. Come on, that should be full time. We've played almost double the stoppage time that's been called out. Another long ball over. He just boots it long. Full time is called. And... I mean, we definitely made a meal of it. I mean, look at that XG graph. Up until here, we did absolutely nothing, which is actually probably about... The, it's it's the time I made all the subs, isn't it? And then suddenly we just took off. I think it might have been just Yeboah wasn't showing up today. Well, he clearly wasn't on a 5.8. But, you know, we both finished the game with 10 men for two very different reasons. Their front line was just awful. Overall, that was a scarier victory than it probably should have been. It was, it was a very comfortable scoreline. A proud of performance. No one gave us a chance. You, you Boa, look less happy. The fact that his mood when the meeting started was relieved after not playing well. So it tells you that none of this is down to you. <laughs> and annoyingly, John Liddell apparently just forgot how to walk and has twisted his ankle while injured after sprinting. You barely took three steps and you've gone down with a twisted ankle. That is the least coordination I've ever known in a winger. But Lusaquino on form absolutely changed the game for us, my hero. And we should have a draw coming up. And here we go, fourth round draw. 33 teams will go into the hat for the 16 matches to be drawn. Teams as varied as Colchester United, Oldham Athletic, Chelmsley Town and Stafford Rangers. Are we the example of a bad team in this? Yeah, we really are. There's two Vanarama National teams in there. One Vanarama... Stafford Rangers are Vanarama National North and we're Southern Premier League Central. Uh, our fans want us to draw Southport. Isn't Southport who the fans wanted us to draw? 
I, I, I feel like I remember calling that out in a video before. Did they get relegated last season? Because it was someone who was at rock bottom of their league. History summary. Yeah, they finished bottom in the Vanarama National League last season and are now struggling in the Vanarama National North. So, I mean, that might not be a bad call, actually, but I'm sure, you know, South Shields have got to be worse. Oh, no, they're also in Vanarama National North. Are we the only... Wait, there's got to be... Yeah, Hornchurch would be a would be a dream draw for us. That's us. We've got Geisley who are in the Northern Premier League, but they're I'm sure they're good. Yeah, they're they're actually dominating their league. Well, four points clear, but still. I know Geisley are normally higher than that. Um yeah, so there's only three teams from our team left in the competition. Let's see who we get. We get either Chester FC or Kidderminster Harriers. So we get the only undecided opponents so far. So that's either Chester FC who are Really struggling in the Vanarama National League. So that's, you know, technically only two or three spots higher than Haven and Waterlooville. Or could have been the Harriers, who are top. <laughs> oh, no, you know who we've got, don't you? That's a little frustrating that we've been matched up against what is actually probably the top team in the competition left. And here we go. One absolutely fantastic bit of news in between these games. Jack Morehouse has signed another contract with us. He's going to be with us for at least one extra season which I would have liked to have got an extra one on there, obviously, but to keep him, just to make sure we keep him for next season is more than good enough. And hopefully, you know, if we're doing well in the Vanarama National, I'm going to assume South, then maybe he'll be more interested in staying with us for an extra season after that. The only thing that does worry me is wages go up considerably after you get, once you get into the Vanarama Leagues. Let's hope that that's not the case here, because I feel like he might break our team's bank. And it looks like Kidderminster Harriers managed to win on penalties, so they only just snuck through which is must be quite a disappointing result for them, really. But it looks like we're going to be taking on Kidderminster against the Harriers. And you know what? I think I might make this a doubleheader. We're going to go forward to that. We've got quite a few games to get through, so I'm just going to crack on with it. The one quick exit to go over, Romain S is going to be leaving us. He's going to be going to hashtag United. Uh, I'll be honest, he hasn't really played this season. I think he has four, four appearances. And in those appearances, he hasn't exactly impressed an average of 6.3. So we've just decided to let him go. Uh, his contract was expiring in the season anyway, so I just figured... Why pay him £65 a week for the next five, six months if we could just get him, let him go now and it's not going to affect the team at all? I'm going to make a quick parting comment. Thank you very much for being a part of the team. You have been great for the last couple of seasons, I will be honest. I mean, last season he was okay, 6.92. But, you know, 27 appearances with five goals and 14 assists in his debut season here. He was a massive help out on the right wing. And if we hadn't just... And to be honest, if we hadn't found two brilliant loan options on the wing, as well as Gaction now coming in, he probably would have stayed there this season as well. But I think we're a much better team as it currently stands. So this is probably just the right move to make. And there we go. Today is the match against Kidderminster Harriers. Absolutely flying in the league. Actually, the third. Were they not Were they not top? Oh, they did lose to Oldham and drew with Gateshead. So they've had a couple of bad games. So hopefully we can take advantage of that and, you know, try and... Get something out of this. I'm not confident, but we have beaten teams in this position before. So fingers crossed. But anyway, we've had three games we've just gone through. And they've we've they've been a bit of a mixed bag. Two very comfortable wins and a nil-nil draw out of absolutely nowhere. But we'll go through the Colville game first. This was very comfortable. They didn't really create anything at all the entire game. Lots of yellow cards for them. Just fouls all over the place. But it all started off. Burt gets to the Lisquano. Gofford plays through Williams, who scores his first ever goal for us. I think it's like his seventh or eighth appearance. So a good moment for him. Then Burt gets the ball over to Waldo, who manages to hit the post. And Burke's shot gets picked up by the goalie on the line, and he just sort of steps into the net with it. I don't really understand what, what he was doing. But Burt didn't have the same problem with his second goal, where he just bursts into the box and slots it past the keeper without too much issue. But after that nice comfortable victory, we played Spalding United, who were not doing particularly well in the league, and we played a first team squad pretty much. There wasn't much rotation at all here, and we just could not find a breakthrough. We absolutely dominated them the entire game and just couldn't finish at all. Yeboba on a 6.0, Gaksha 6.5, Burke 6.9, but look at the XG graph. Just we were constantly having shots of 2.38 XG from 11 shots on target, and we just could not find that breakthrough. It was a very frustrating game. And then in the next game, in, in a weird reversal, I decided to play the backup team pretty much because I wanted to rest the first team for Kidderminster the Harriers. And the backup team won 6-2, which was, I don't understand at all. An absolutely fantastic performance from well, pretty much everyone, to be honest. Waldo bagged two goals. Lucy Quainer got two. Burke and Maguire both got one each. Let's quickly, we'll, we'll try and quickly go through the goals. There is quite a few of them. It all started off with 
Burke getting a nice ball over to Waldo, who beats the keeper at the near post. I'm not really sure how that managed to find a way through, but I'm not going to complain. They did respond pretty much instantly, though. A nice little ball around the outside there, gets it inside to Tate, who just rockets it past Jackson in net. Before a Burke free kick gets flicked on by Maguire and goes into the net. I'm sure it was intentional, but it, it looked a bit weird. Then not long later, long Williams ball fell to Waldo. He gets it into Lusacrano for a beautiful left-footed volley into the roof of the net. Before Maguire gets the ball out to Burke, he does get fouled here, doesn't he? But just manages to get past and comfortably finish himself with the outside of his boot. Lovely bit of flair there, just before half-time. And then like 15 or so seconds into the second half, Lusacrano loses and regains the ball, gets the ball over to Waldo, heads it in off the near post again. Absolutely loves the near post, does our Shiloh. Before Heliwell picks up the ball in midfield, Chips it over to Lusquano for his second volleyed finish of the game. And then they did get one back with a nice little ball. Well, a nice, a terrible ball to bait. So it gets gifted back to them and it gets into the middle and Tate scores his second of the match. Overall, this felt more comfortable than it probably was. I mean, we only had a 2.33 XG compared to their 1.8. They had two very good chances and scored both of them. Whereas we had... We had a few half chances, but made the most of every single opportunity we got. And after gaining those six points in the last three games, we are still top. We're 11 points clear of St. Albans and Kettering now. Kettering have had a pretty awful time since they beat us. Well, I say awful, I don't think they've lost. No. So they beat us, then they beat Colville, both by 2-1 score lines. Then they drew with Tomworth 1-1, drew with Felix 3-3, and drew with Leamington 0-0. So they've dropped a hell of a lot of points. And St. Albans City have caught them back up. And despite a pretty bad time for St. Albans City as well, I don't think they've had a great cross couple of games. No, they've lost to Peterborough Sports and Royston in the last two matches. It seems like absolutely nobody <laughs> wants to catch us. So despite us dropping a couple of points here and there recently, uh, we are still 11 points clear and it's looking very good for the rest of the season. I mean, there is still 15 games left, but I am pretty confident, let's say, at the very least. But anyway... Let's get on to today's match. And I think this is how we're going to be lining up for it. The only slight fitness concern we've got is Zach Mitchell. I'm not I'm I'm, I'm weighing up whether to play Zach Mitchell or Will Evans because you've got Zach Mitchell who's not in 100 percent condition, but then you've got Will Evans who is on 100 percent condition, but he's also on a heavy workload, so will tire incredibly quickly. So I'm not sure which one is best to bring on. In fact, you know what? I'm going to start with Will Evans. Will Evans, despite being one of our best defenders stat-wise, I feel like, has not really been performing this season. I mean, he hasn't played many times, but whenever he has played, he has not come out with a great rating. He's averaging a 6.9 over the last five appearances, 6.88 overall. So I'm a little disappointed with the impact he's had. In fact, actually, Gaksha hasn't really been performing lately either. So I'm going to mess with his, where else can he play good? The player's an inverted winger. I think that might work pretty well for him. That is supposedly his star position. But it does, you know, it brings in his decision making a lot better. I mean, it does prioritise his eight crossing over his 11 finishing, which isn't ideal. But yeah, let's try this. We're mixing it up a bit out of nowhere for honestly very little reason. But we haven't got the best out of Gaksha so far this season. He's in, He's played... 13 times is averaging a 6.87 and to be honest while he's not obviously like you know the squad star man or anything he should definitely be doing better than that with the stats he's got I feel like in fact the, the best performance he had might have been when he played up front but I can't really sacrifice your boa so yeah let's just do it right so dressing room team talk we're a good run lately go out there and impress me no one cares uh trust you guys I trust you guys. Ratchford and Will Evans looking complacent. We're up against someone who are two divisions above us and they're looking complacent. How How is that possible? I didn't even check their formation. They're in a 4 4 a classic 4 4 2, sorry, is what we're supposed to call that, obviously. We've got 348 people down at Pat Meadow for this. So this is one of our higher attendances, which is a little bit depressing to think. <laughs> but a long blow from paradise doesn't find anybody and they pick it up in the midfield they're going to try and play through freeman so, oh no petri gets the ball and absolutely rockets it over i think we escaped there very luckily okay now jedgy with the long free kick will evans picks it up morehouse gets the ball to burke and we've got an attack on the go here potentially although burke's running into nowhere Let's get it to Sonoja. Long ball over to Morehouse. Oh, it falls to Yeboah somehow. Who scored? Wow. 
Where did that come from? That's, that's, that's completely come out of the blue, it feels like. This ball comes over. Morehouse sort of starts going for it, gives up. The defender apparently just thinks there's no danger whatsoever. Yeboah picks it up and rockets it past the keeper. That had so much power on it. But yeah, that this could not have got off to a better start. They've missed a sitter and we've scored out of nowhere. Right, another long ball for them. Paradise just passes it to their striker. And Kelly's going to play it out wide. Got Wilson attacking. Oh, he's got... Oh, that's a good chance, but he, try, he tries to chest it up. I don't really understand that. Jackson gets it away, and Yeboah might be onto this again. The keeper's come out. What is he doing? What was the keeper doing there? He just... <laughs> that doesn't make any sense at all. There's a great, quick distribution from Jackson there. But... I was so surprised to see the keeper appear on the edge of the screen there. He was never going to get anywhere near that. I did think Yuboa had put it wide after his shot. What a fantastic first half this has been for us. I think, yep, it's half time and it's 2 0. Wow. Very happy with the way things are going. Keep it up, lads. Everyone seems chuffed. There we go. No more complacency. That's what we like to see. I don't think I even need to make any changes. We seem to be doing pretty well across the board. I mean, Gaksha again hasn't really shown up in a massive way. But he also hasn't needed to because all the players come down the other side. But either way, Staniland in midfield. Jeju gets the ball over to Martin. I'm going to try and work it down the left here. Oh, Petra gets a lovely ball inside, but he's miles offside. And he does spanner it wide anyway, thankfully. We're not even going to get a replay on that offside. It was so far. 15 minutes. Okay, let's see this highlight first. Burke gets a cross in. Yuboa at the back post. And it's cleared off the line for a corner. We'll let the corner play out before I look to make a substitution. But we have got a few tired legs on there. But for now, Burke's putting in a corner. Gets it to Yuboa at the back post again. Who does it straight into the keeper's arms. Right. Who is absolutely knackered? We've got... Oh, I took Jack Bates off the bench. He was, he was, he was going to be on there. So I think Will Evans is still looking complacent and is one of our lowest performing players. So I'm going to bring Zach Mitchell on for him. Do I need a new person in, on the wing? Well, Liddell can definitely come on. And Gax has performed worse, but Leon Burke is struggling a bit condition-wise. So I'm going to bring Liddell on. And I, I might leave it at that for now. I mean, our left side with Maguire, he is quite knackered as well. I would have liked to have brought Bates on, but apparently didn't think to include him on the bench. For now, they've got to throw in in a dangerous area, but it does, the cross does get blocked. Setters gets it in, though, and Tonadra gets it away. That's going to say, surely that can't go in. Paradise blocks the shot superbly, according to the commentary at the bottom. But for now, Wilson's got a corner here. And Gofford gets it away this time. JG picks it up. Kelly has a shot out of nowhere and it's going to trickle out wide for a goal kick. Okay, five minutes left. We've got another quiet period here. I'm going to just make one last substitution. I'm going to bring Lusaquino on for Yeboa. Just give Lusaquino a run out and also, you know, you give, you, you've got to give the man who scored the two goals a little moment as he goes off. And there we go. A very comfortable 2-0 victory out of... That is so unexpected. I was really ex expecting us to struggle in this match. Uh, they actually ended up with the better XG, thanks largely to a couple of chances at the end. That might have been that paradise block that we couldn't really make out. But I would, I would assume getting the ball in that sort of position and getting a shot off would be quite a large XG contribution. But it doesn't matter. Well done, lads. Let's go and take a look at the draw for the next round. We're going very deep in this competition this season. Actually, before the draw, I will say, Tommy Jackson did get player of the match against Kidderminster Harriers there. Six saves, 8.4 rates in 24 passes completed, and he did get the assist on the second goal for Yeboah. Now, when he joined, I gave Tommy Jackson quite a bit of stick over the first season or two. While we were doing very well in the league, he was conceding a lot of goals that I just didn't feel like he should have conceded. And that seems to have gone away this season. He's got only conceded 18 in 26 games, which, you know, it's slightly less games, but it's far less goals conceded. We'd have to have a pretty much a meltdown in the next nine games to concede 11 to bring him up to last season's event final stats. He's on an average and a 7.2 rating compared to he's been remarkably consistent with 7.03 the last two seasons. But yeah, he seems to have worked out a lot of that just absolute bullshit out of his game. But I'm actually really impressed with him this season. And just before we get to the draw, Jack Lane has been getting repeated offers in. Uh, he is leaving at the end of the season. He's only started nine times for us this season. There's been seven starts in the league and two starts in the cup. I think I'm going to let him go. He's been very much there as backup. 
but he's not really playing and he's not particularly happy and he's not going to stay with us past the end of the season anyway, which is 15 games away. So I think we're just going to accept those and see him on his way. But regardless of that, we've got the FA Trophy fifth round draw today. 17 teams going into the hat who didn't manage to win their game. Kingsley or Southport ended up being a draw, so that's a replay. There is only us and Geisley, who are not in the Vanarama National North or South. But we've already knocked out Kidderminster the Harriers, so you know there's not going to be much tougher opposition here. Before I do this, who would the fans wanted us to get? Maidstone, who are ninth in the Vanarama National South. <laughs> Uh, Dagenham and Redbridge, who are ninth in the Vanarama National League, and Nuneaton, who are 11th in the Vanarama National North. I don't see how they could be the three worst teams. I would much rather come up against Geisley. Rural teams? And we get Bromley. Where are Bromley? Bromley are 14th in the National League. So they're much worse than Kidderminster the Harriers, who, you know, they're down in fourth now. Absolutely tragic. They should still be comfortably better than us. What's their recent form looking like? Oh, they've just won against Slough Town in the Cup, but in the league, it's draw, loss, loss, draw, draw, loss, loss. And they had four wins in five. And then they had four wins in five right after three losses in four. Is that I always get so lost when there's cup games in between trying to like pass out the numbers? So this does strike me as a relatively winnable game. I mean, it, you know, if we could beat Kidwitz the Harriers so comfortably, I don't see why we couldn't beat Bromley. When is that game going to be? That game is down for the 14th of February, which is pretty much a month away. So I think that might actually be when we come back. We might do the Bromley game. Everything's looking relatively comfortable from a league point of view. And we don't have any massive games in between that. We've got Leamington in 7th, Hemel Hempstead in 6th, Stratford in 16th, Peterborough Sports in 19th, and Stourbridge in 18th. So I think Bromley might be a good Okay, you know, maybe we'll do that and then we'll make it another double header. So yeah, we'll do a double header and it will either be the fifth round and then the sixth round, or is it a quarter final if we manage to get through? Fifth round, quarter final. If we get to the quarter final, we'll do that as a double header. If not, we'll probably do a second game. I mean, by this point, it might be St Albans City, which looking at the games left, you know, obviously there's still quite a lot of games in between that. With how things are going, that would be the game that we could win the league on, I think. But it obviously depends how the teams below us are doing. And we have got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's the 11th league game we've got coming up, so that's quite a way away. But regardless, we're going to come back for Bromley. And fingers crossed, we can make our first ever FA Trophy quarter final. We've already gone deeper in this competition than we ever have before. So this is quite an exciting time for the club. But for now, I'm going to have to finish this episode here. We've had two fantastic cup games today. Absolutely dominated both Haven and Waterloo and Kid against the Harriers. 2-0 victories in both. So thank you very much for watching these with me. If you've enjoyed, maybe leave a like or comment down below. It really does help out a great deal and it means a hell of a lot to me as well. I will be back to face Bromley in a month's time. Subscribe to make sure you don't miss it. And I'll see you then.